Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some of which I grew up with, and some which are new to me. Today's game is a 1986 release from Sierra, developed by Al Lowe. It is Winnie the Pooh in the Hundred Acre Wood. Now, as a kid, this was actually one of my favorite games to play on the Atari ST. Um, and it's, it's just a really charming adventure game. Um, it ran on a engine in the loosest possible sense, developed by Al for one of his earlier games called Troll's Tale. In fact, it was just the third game that Al Lowe developed. Um, and Troll's Tale provided the influence uh, and inspiration for the later Black Cauldron game that Sierra went and put out. Um, but the, the key thing with the engine that Al designed for these games was that it required minimal typing. It was mostly uh, based on directional inputs and occasionally sort of multiple choice actions within a scene. And the good thing about this is it made it very kid friendly because it made it very difficult to mess things up. So you couldn't type something wrong or you couldn't really get yourself into an unwinnable situation. It was just a very friendly way to handle things. And so, yeah, that made it ideal for an adaptation of something like Winnie the Pooh. However, it did still incorporate some of those uh, beloved adventure game conventions that we all know and love so much. Um, one thing in particular that you'll want to do if you decide to play this game is make a map. Um, and so that's something, it, kind of a, a, a helpful skill for kids to develop while they're playing this game as well. And I know I certainly enjoyed playing this game back in the day, making a map, making a note of where all the objects were and so on. And besides that, it's just a really nice, really charming adaptation of one of the most beloved properties in the Disney house. So let's go take a look. Right, here we are with Winnie the Pooh in the Hundred Acre Wood from Walt Disney Personal Computer Software and Sierra. So this was a relatively early Sierra game, um, and one of Al Lowe's earlier games as well, running on one of his earlier engines as we previously talked about. And it's a really great little game. Let's take a look. So the basic concept of this game uh, is that, well, we'll see. So you are in Christopher Robin's playroom. He is outside playing in his treehouse in the Hundred Acre Wood. So. Right from the beginning, we have a choice of things we can do. So let's just immediately ask, what should I do? And I'll head back the microphone. Early this morning, a blustery wind shook the hundred acre wood. It picked things up and blew them far from their owners' houses. Your job is to find the lost objects and return them to their owners. But hurry, because soon the blustery wind may come back and scatter the objects again. So uh, from here, we can go in various directions. Uh, we can go into the Hundred Acre Wood, or we can look at the toy box. Let's look at the toy box. So if you want to stop before you finish the game, come here. This toy chest holds your place so you can come back to it later. The chest holds only one game. When you save your game, the chest drops the last game it was holding. When you're ready to play again, just come here and get your old game out of the chest. Everything will be just the way it was when you saved it. So this is um, a nice sort of kid-friendly way to explain how save games work so this isn't a very long game so you can probably finish it in one setting as we may well do today we'll see how that goes um but yeah if you wanted to you could save your game and pick up later so we'll uh, forget about that for the minute look at the playroom again and let's go into the hundred acre wood now as we play this it's a very good idea to make a map so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So you'll have to bear with me as we play because I will be scribbling things on a map. So we'll start. With the forest is very quiet here. The ground feels as soft as a carpet. So things we can do here, we can ask about Tigger or we can ask about the mist. Watch out for Tigger. Sometimes he bounces in from nowhere and bounces people clear across the hundred acre wood. And the mist. Sometimes the mist gets so thick you can't see anything, but usually if you walk for a bit, it clears up. So these are two of the hazards that you'll encounter uh, as you progress through the game. So Tigger is just a general pain in the ass, as Tigger always is, and the mist, um, effectively, you have to walk randomly for a little while until you end up in a random location. So we have four different places that we can go in this one so i've started my map look authentic adventure game map right there 
Uh, let's go north from here and see what happens. So use the mouse to select your choice, so press the number or first letter of what you want. Press the backspace keys to see what you just finished reading. Press C to see what you're carrying. Control S turns the sound off and on. Escape takes you to the playroom in case you get lost or want to save the game. So you can never get truly lost because you can just press escape to go back to the playroom and basically start again from there. So we're going to go north, so we're going to press N. And here we are. So to going north from the carpet forest it takes us to the log. Rabbit, Piglet and Pooh hid inside this log on the day they tried to debounce Tigger. It didn't work, you know. So nothing we can do here, but we can go in all directions. So we can go north. We can go east, and we can go west. Let's continue going north for now. There is a toy shovel lying here. A tall dead tree is standing here. So this is the dead tree. And we can ask, why does the tree just stand there? Because it can't leave. Do you get it? Do you get it? It's a joke. It's a funny joke. Because it's a dead tree, it can't grow leaves, so it can't leave. Do you get it? <laughs> um, right, so we could take that shovel, but you can only carry one object at a time in this game. So let's have a look at the top of the tree first. Wow, it's a long way down from here. So, look around. From up here you can see the entire 100 acre wood. But you can't stay here too long because in the distance you see dark clouds sh taking shape. Look up, you see a little more tree but a whole lot of sky. So nothing up here, sometimes there is an item up in the tree so it's worth having a look up there but not on this occasion. There's a toy shovel lying here, let's take that for now. I missed what that said. Let me drop that. Okay, but it doesn't belong here. So it tells you if the uh, item you've picked up is in the right place or not. It's basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get all the objects back to their rightful owners. So we'll pick that up. Okay. You have a toy shovel. It would be fun to dig in the sand with it. So um, that maybe gives you a clue as to who needs that item. So from the dead tree, we can go north, south, east, west. Let's continue going north. And that takes us to Rabbit's Garden. And that to the map. Rabbit's Garden is beautiful. It has rows of carrots, turnips and radishes. There are two holes here. We can go into either of those holes and again there are north, south, east and west exits. Let's go into the left hole. You're in a hole in the rabbit's garden. You think you see a tunnel ahead. We'll go towards the tunnel. You're in a gopher tunnel below rabbit's garden. You think you see a light at the far end. Towards the light at the end of the tunnel. And it's rabbit's kitchen. Rabbit's kitchen is filled with vegetables. No wonder he's so healthy. Let's go and see rabbit. Rabbit is relaxing in his underground house. As you come in, he says, Hello, my name is Rabbit. Do sit down. Ask, may I see the kitchen? Talk to Rabbit or go outside. So, let's talk to Rabbit. You haven't seen that Tigger, have you? Asks Rabbit. You know, sometimes he bounces me clear across the wood and makes me drop everything I'm carrying. Uh, we've already seen the kitchen, but we may as well ask if we can see it. Of course you may, say Rabbit. Just press a key. And there we are. So, we can't go back into the tunnel from here. So let's just go outside. And that takes us to here. But where is this in relation to everything else? Let's just go south from here. All right, we need to find the garden again. So Rabbit's Garden, there it is, okay, so Rabbit's Garden is west of his house. So we'll add that to the map. A rabbit house, and then east of that was 
rabbit's back door. Hey, this is Winnie the Pooh. I shouldn't make filthy jokes like that. Um, although I'm sure there's stuff on the internet in that uh, in that vein. Let's go down the right hole. See what's in there. This hole doesn't go anywhere. Leave. Fair enough. Okay. Let's continue going north from here. And that takes us to the North Pole. So, this is the North Pole. At least the animals think so. Pooh discovered it while exploring with Christopher Robin. Read the sign that hangs on the pole. It says, North Pole. Discovered by Pooh. Pooh found it. Okay, so it seems we can go in all the other directions from here. Okay, so we can't go any further than north. So those options are still displayed, even if you can't go in that direction. So, this is evidently the northernmost point of the forest, hence the North Pole, uh, as you will know if you've read the Winnie the Pooh books. Let's try going east. Pooh's favourite place to hunt for honey is at the top of this tree. You know who makes honey, don't you? You better be careful. Do you get it? It's a pun. It's a pun on bees, because bees make honey and Pooh likes honey. Ask what would Pooh do? Uh, let me add to the map first before I ask what Pooh does. This is honey tree. <clears throat> Any bear would climb the tree, of course, but you're not a bear. I can choose the option number two, though, and climb the tree. That hole looks as if there might be honey inside. Stick your head in the hole to see if there's really honey inside. Why not? What could what could do that? Stick your head into a hole that might be filled with bees. Bees! Oh no! Only a bear with very little brain would try a thing such as that. So we can't do that. So, well... Never mind then. Oh no, it's Tigger! Oh no! Tigger is bouncing you across the hundred acre wood! Say, thank you very much, Tigger. That's enough bouncing for now. See you later. Okay, shouts Tigger, it sure was fun bouncing with you. Ho <laughs> hoo! TTFN, ta ta for now, shouts Tigger. And as he bounces out of sight, he sings. And we swear it, Tigger, because Tigger is an annoying little bastard. Oh, that Tigger, he bounces so hard, he makes people bounce clear across the hundred acre wood. He even makes them drop anything they are carrying. Right, so we found Roo. Now Roo is evidently who we want to give the shovel to because he's playing in his sand pit. However, we do not have the um, shovel anymore. So we need to figure out where we are. So let's go north. Right, so we're up at the north end again. So the picnic table. is west of the North Pole. Let's have a look under the table. There's some footprints and a few weeds, but nothing else. And if we go west again from there, that's a hill. Run to the top of the hill. Running up the hill feels so good you decide to run back down again. Now you're out of breath. We can lie down and look up at the sky. You look at the sky and fall asleep. And you wake up, you're hungry for a honey sandwich. See, this is what I mean. This game is just, just so unbelievably charming throughout. It just captures the feeling of those Winnie the Pooh books just so utterly perfectly. I absolutely love it. I still love it. I haven't played this game for probably about 30 years at this point, And oh, it's just all coming back. It's coming back. It's magical. Absolutely magical. Uh, so, we can't go any further west from there as well, so I think we might reach the western boundary. Uh, let's go south. And that takes us to Kanga's house. Which means that Rue is just to the east of there. So, let's not go and see Kanga just yet. 
uh, because we haven't got anything to give her. Let's go south. There's a pile of books here. Pooh calls this his thoughtful spot. It's a fine place to sit and think. Alright, so... Thought... Spot... This map is messy. Never mind. Let's sit and think poo thoughts. You hum a little hum and think about pleasant things such as a nice pot of humming. You begin to notice a rumbly on your tumbly. Sit and think about this game. <laughs> uh, I'd forgotten about that. But yeah, it just goes blank. So you literally have to sit and think about this game until you press. That's long enough. Perhaps you'd better get back to the game. All right, let's take the books. Okay, you have some books. They probably belong to a very wise animal. Wonder who that could be, boys and girls. Uh, let's go east from here. There's a tiny pair of mittens here. You're in a clump of six pine trees. The wind seems to be getting blustery again. Alright, so let's make a little note of the mitts are there. Because we can't carry those at the moment. Um, so, if we go east from here, we should get to the dead tree. There it is. Let's go east from here, then. You know, some people can't see the hundred acre wood for all these trees. Trees. Um, and so we should be able to go east one more time before we reach the boundary again, I think. So, east. Christopher Robin loves to play in this treehouse. He's probably inside right now. So, tree house. Look at my map. It's coming along really nicely. It's my map. It's an adventure game. Right, uh, let's go to see Christopher Robin. There's a popped balloon hanging here. So balloon. Welcome to my treehouse, says Christopher Robin. Today's a perfect day to play games. So, uh, ask Christopher Robin for help. I'm sorry, but I can't help you, says Christopher Robin. I must stay here. I'm not sure, but that wind may have taken some of my things, too. Ask me to play with your toys. You certainly may, says Christopher Robin. It was nice of you to ask me. Uh, so, let's leave the treehouse. Thanks so much for visiting me, says Christopher Robin. I hope you'll come back soon. Let's play with his toys. Since Christopher Robin said it was alright, you play with his toys for a bit. But then you move on so you can beat the blustery wind. Okay, so to the north of here we should have Rabbit's back door. There it is. Look closely at the door. The hole looks a bit smaller than you are. You might not fit. Squeeze through the door. Pooh tried this once and got stuck for a week. Okay, okay, go ahead. Phew, he just made it. If Pooh didn't eat so much honey, perhaps he would have made it too. So this just takes us back to Rabbit. So not very useful at the minute. So to the east. Excuse me, hiccups. And uh, we should be able to go one more east from here. No, we're at the boundary. One more north from here is what I meant. Could something be hidden under one of these rocks? No, not even the blustery wind could blow things under a rock. So, rocks. And this is the northeast corner of the forest. Look under every rock just to make sure. Nothing under here, nothing under here. Nothing under here, nothing here either. No, not here either, nothing. This one's a little muddy. Nothing under here, nothing. Nothing under here, nothing here either. Nothing under here, nothing under here. No, not here either. Nothing. This one's a little muddy. Nothing under here. Nothing here either. Nothing under here. Enough. Enough. See? Nothing there. Right. Um, okay. So, south takes us to Rabbit's back door. South again takes us to the treehouse. South again. us 
to the lunch spot, I think. That's what we'll call it. What time does Winnie the Pooh get hungry for honey? All the time. Because he's a fat bastard. Uh, just like me. I can relate. Anyway, uh, south. You're now in Galleon's lap. There are 60-something trees here. Every time Christopher Robin counts them, he gets a different answer. Galleon's lap. Count the trees. You count very carefully. There seem to be 63 trees. You count very carefully. There seem to be 64 trees. You see how this works. Uh, let's go south. There's a mirror here. This gloomy place is the home of Eeyore the donkey. He's standing down there beside his house of sticks, waiting for something sad to happen. Poor old Eeyore. He's become far more relevant in our modern world. He is the relatable face of depression and anxiety. Uh, let's not go see Eeyore just yet, because we've got nothing to give him. Let's go west. The blue crayon here. Christopher, Robin and Pooh love to come here. Sometimes they have a nice talk, but lots of times they just do nothing. So let's do nothing. <laughs> there we go. Um, so if we go north from here, there's a picnic basket here. This is one of the loveliest spots in the Hundred Acre Wood. Yeah, we'll mark it on my map as lovely. And the picnic basket is there. Uh, worth noting that the position of the items is randomised each time you play this, so um, although I'm making a note of these items for this playthrough, in subsequent playthroughs the items will be in completely different places. And if the blustery wind happens to come along, then they will all be in different places again anyway, so let's hum the poo song. Enough of that. Uh, north. There's a toy shovel lying here. You see, so after we got bounced around by Tigger, we dropped the shovel somewhere along the way, and that uh, took us here. So, Al wouldn't have built his house so high if he had to climb all those steps. So this is Wall's house. Um, shovel. Oh, look out, the mysterious mist is coming here. It gets so thick that you can't see through it. Just keep walking and it will soon clear up. Right, as so we got where we were going. Okay, so we've ended up somewhere completely different. Um, let's try and work out where we are. Here we go north. This is Piglet's house. North again, that's Winnie the Pooh's house. Pooh's thoughtful spot. Now we've been there before, so we can stick that on the map. So Pooh is there. And Piglet is to the south. There's some noise coming here from outside. I'm just gonna shut the door. Ah, the light it burns. Um, anyway, so Piglet was to the south of Pooh. And there is an apron there. And then to the south of there, we had the floody place. They had the pail. Uh, let's go east from here. That takes us to the bridge. Take him to the bridge! Climb up the tree near the bridge. 
You're really out on a limb now. This is a tall tree and you're almost at the top. The bridge is far below you. It looks like there's a board missing from the bridge. Let's drop a leaf into the river. The leaf falls slowly through the branches to the river. At last it touches the water then floats down the stream. Let's climb higher. The branches above you are very small. If you climb any higher they will surely break. Let's climb down then. Uh, how do you play poo sticks? Easy! You and Pooh drop sticks or pine cones from one side of the bridge, then you run to the other side to see who floats out first. I used to play poo sticks when I was a kid. Uh, the village I grew up in had a load of little streams and brooks that were pretty good for uh, playing poo sticks in. Unfortunately, they, they did kind of dry up over time, so they're not really what they once were. So you can't really play poo sticks in them anymore, which is a real shame. It's a bit of my childhood lost there, but uh, fond memories nonetheless. Climb down the bank to the stream. From down here, the bridge looks quite high. Nothing down here, though. Uh, back to the bridge. And let's go east from here. And that's where the playroom is. Okay, so we've nearly been everywhere. Uh, let's go north. And west. Here we have woozle tracks. And then just to the north of here should be the last place we need to visit to have a complete map. Piglet said he once saw a heffalump in this pit. Pit. Ask about heffalumps. Christopher Robin said he once saw a heffalump. It was just lumping along through the wood. Heffalumps are fond of honey. At least that's what Pooh says. Let's go into the hole. Are you sure that hole looks a bit frightening? Oh well, here we go. This heffalump track is quite dark. Can you get out without a light? <laughs> take a short nap. Alright, go ahead and take a nap. Luckily for you, this game has an automatic heffalump detector to stand guard. Press any key when you wake up. Good night. Welcome back. That was a very short nap. You'll be happy to know that not a single heffalump lumped by while you were asleep. Well, that's good, isn't it? Feel your way along the walls. Feeling your way along the walls, you slowly make your way out of the heffalump trap. Okay, so we are still carrying uh, owl stuff, and he is two to the east from here. Okay, let's climb up and see Wall. You're in the middle of the ladder that goes to Owl's treehouse. It's a long, long ladder. Climbing up. Owl's house is high up the tree. When you look out across the hundred acre wood, you can see a long way. Uh, so let's, let's ring the bell. Come in. Wise old owl is just about ready for lunch. Be careful, he loves to talk. Uh, so look at Owl's dining room. It's a pair of rain boots here. This is Owl's dining room. Sit down and think about lunch. Al says, you may stay for lunch if you wish, but I must warn you the blustery wind may soon return. Uh, let's say thanks, I need to keep looking. I couldn't agree more, perhaps another time. Okay, so do we just drop? Thank you for returning my books, says Al. I don't read them very much, but they are wonderful for propping the door open. Okay, so now we can pop into Owl's dining room and pick up those rain boots. You're wearing a pair of rain boots over your shoes. Leave Owl's house. I have a feeling those belong to Eeyore. I can't remember. offhand. Um, well, let's try it. So, Eeyore is eastern and southwise. There's a mirror there. Walk down to see Eeyore. Eeyore is standing by his house of sticks, thinking gloomy thoughts. So, 
Say good morning to Eeyore. Good morning, says Eeyore. Yes, I suppose it is for those who enjoy being blown about the wood like so many dead leaves. Pat Eeyore and rub his ears. I'm sorry, says Eeyore, but you must have the wrong house. No one at this address ever gets his ears rubbed. Look inside Eeyore's house. From the inside you see lots of outside. Eeyore's house is full of holes. They let in the cold air and rain, but then what can one expect? Uh, do you want my rain boots? No, no you don't. Who would want those? Leaving already, says Eeyore. I'm not surprised. This is a sad and gloomy place, even for an animal as cheerful as I. Right, um, so what else have we got? We've got the shovel at Owl's place. Uh, so you can only have one object in a location at a time as well. So if we drop the boots there for the minute, go take that and I think that belongs to Rue so if we go west again and then north twice there's Rue, Rue's playing in his sandy pit and he's having a wonderful time it's the blustery wind so you don't lose your items if the wind blows, but all the items that are lying around are now in different places, uh, which is annoying. Let's talk to Rue. Kanga never lets me walk about the Hundred Acre Wood alone. You're lucky to be able to go on such a great explorer all by yourself. Let's play in the sandy pit. Wee! It's fun to play together. Do you want this? Hooray! Right. Two down. So, now... All the stuff is in different places, so we're going to have to wander around and find it all again. Nothing under the table. Anything on the hill? Nothing there. Let's see if there's anything in Ganga's house. Hello, says a friendly voice from inside. Welcome to our home. Clean your feet and go inside. Thank you for cleaning your feet, dear. Come right in. Hello dear, says Kanga in a motherly voice. It's so nice to see you. I hope you're having a good time playing. Talk to Kanga. Have you had your extract of malt yet today? Asks Kanga. I'll be glad to fix it for you. Ask about Rue. My, says Kanga. I hope he's playing in the sandy pit where he said he would. It's his favourite spot in the wood, you know. Oh, it's Tigger. Thankfully we don't have any stuff at the minute. So that's fine. Right, where are we now? A picnic basket. Who would want that? You have a basket that would be great for carrying things to a picnic. Well, yes, obviously. But who would want that? Um... Good question. Hmm. Would Rabbit want to? Rabbit's not super picnic easy. Rabbit's a dick. <laughs> no, you don't want that. Okay, fair enough. So who does want that, is the question. Does Christopher Robin want it? No. No, he doesn't. Owl was talking about 
having lunch, wasn't he? I'm not sure if the different characters want more than one item. Let's find out. Nope, you don't want that. Fair enough. And out the front door. And down the ladder. And down very carefully. Um, I mean, my natural response would be to give it to Pooh, but he's probably more interested in honey. But uh, let's go see him anyway. Ring the bell. You ring the bell and Winnie the Pooh calls, Come in! So you do. You're in Pooh's house. Talk to Pooh. You look a bit hungry, says Pooh. I'll get you a pot of honey. And as long as you're having some, perhaps I'll get a pot for myself. Uh, do you want this? No, you do not. Oh, you know what? Um, it occurs to me that it's not necessarily giving the items to characters. I think it's just putting the items in the right places. So, if we go to the picnic table, which is right here. There we go. Perfect. Right. Uh, west. And south. South again. There's a mirror. Who or what wants that? You're carrying a mirror. It would be so perfect for someone who watches himself do stoutness exercises. That sounds like poo. Thank you for returning my mirror, says Pooh. Since losing it, the only exercise I've gotten has been lifting honey pots. Say, Pooh, may I see your house? Pooh hums a little hum. Pooh, may I please see your house? What did you say? asked Pooh. My honey pots were calling me and I couldn't hear you. Of course, says Pooh. Make yourself at home while I remove this bit of fluff from my ear. You're looking around Winnie the Pooh's house while Pooh enjoys a bit of honey. Climb up Pooh's secret stairs. Pooh has some secret stairs inside his house. It goes up inside the tree, but to where? Keep climbing. You climb the stairs and find a hidden door. Press the key to go through the door. You go through the door and find yourself on a branch, high in the air. This is Pooh's secret honey hiding place. Uh, climb down to Pooh's bedroom. You are in Pooh's bedroom. Look around the room. There's some empty honey pots beside the bed and a spot where a mirror once stood. That's the mirror we just just given back to him, so. Uh, go back and talk to Pooh. And go look for more lost objects. Right, so what else do we need? Read the sign by Piglet's house. The sign reads Trespassers Will. Piglet says that this is short for Trespassers William. He was Piglet's uncle and gave Piglet this fine house. Piglet opens the door and welcomes you to his home. Go to Piglet's living room. Piglet says, oh dear, 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 I hope you can return everything before that blustery wind starts blowing again. Uh, let's ask Piglet about heffalumps. Yes, I saw a heffalump once. I really did, says Piglet, but I think I scared it off when I ran away. So you have nothing useful to tell us at the minute. This part of the wood is always wet. Who calls it his floody place? Follow the stream to see where it comes from. That's the bridge. Right, maybe that's where the rain shoes are for. So if we... Oops. Uh, back to the bridge. So if we then go east. A pop balloon. Okay. You're holding a pop balloon. Great. Uh, and then north. 
going to drop that balloon for the minute because I'm going to pop up to Al's house again. I'll take these rain boots. And then let's see if they're useful in the flooded bit. Nope, they don't belong there. Okay, fair enough. Well, they're, they're there now anyway. Uh, so if we just remember where those are. Let's go east. 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 I don't think there's ever any items in the toy box. Let's just make sure. Oh, there's a tiny pair of mittens here. Okay. <laughs> so there is stuff in the toy box. Uh, take. You have a tiny pair of mittens. They're so small they only cover your thumbs. Uh, look at the playroom again. Now, who would those belong to? Who's got tiny hands? The tiniest characters I can think of are Piglet and Roo, so let's try them. Uh. So do you want this? No, no you do not. Uh, north, east, north, do you want this? Yes! Okay, so certain characters do have more than one item. Alright, so going well. How we, how many we got left to do? Five more to go. Anything in the hole? Nothing there. Anything in Rabbit's house? Nope. I like how Rabbit doesn't want to let Pooh in his front door, but he will quite happily put up with you coming in through his secret passage. Ain't nothing there. Can't go that way. Uh... A toy pail. That looks like something that would belong to Rue as well. My toy pail, says Rue. Thank you ever so much. I love playing with it in this sand pit. Oh, look out. The mysterious mist is coming in. There we go, right. Uh, so... Sorry, I don't know where any of the items are now. Okay, well, let's just be methodical. There's the rain boots. Are they ruse as well? They can't all be ruse, surely. Well, let's try it while we think about it. Oh no. Bloody wind. Do you want this? No. No, you do not. For once. Who does want that then? I don't know at the moment. Um, so, anyway. 
Again, let's try and be methodical. Work our way across. Can't go any further that way, so south. Nothing in his house. Off to the west. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Oh, there's an apron there. That seems like a Angerish thing. So let's go see if she wants that. Brilliant. Okay. So, Kanga, may I please see the rest of your house? Kanga's house is neat and clean. She has pretty furniture too. Look behind the chest. It's even clean back here. Go back to Kanga. And leave. Right. So we're nearly done, I think. Three more. Three more things to go. Uh, so... Uh, where do we get to? So... To the east. Then south. Off to the west. Where are all the items? down here oops wrong button east something ended up in the toy box again yes a blue crayon you have a blue crayon in your hand but nothing to write on If you talk with Al while you're carrying something, he will tell you what he knows about it. That's uh, that's worth knowing. So that might give us a few clues. So in fact, let's go and see Al and see what he has to say about this blue crayon. I suspect it's going to be ruse again. <laughs> but let's go see what he says. I love to talk and everyone tells me I'm quite helpful, says Al. I'll talk all day long if you let me. If you find something and don't know who the owner is, says Al, bring it to me. I'll try to help you. For example, that object you're carrying now is interesting. I know I've seen it before. Hmm, let me think about this. As far as I know, none of the animals in the Hundred Acre Wood can write, except me, of course. But this crayon isn't mine. So, none of the animals, you will notice. However, there's one person in the Hundred Acre Wood who is not an animal. And he is here. Thank you for finding my blue crayon, says Christopher Robin. I was getting tired of colouring the sky green. Right, uh, leave the treehouse. So we should only have two items left to go now. Uh, but where are they? They've all been blown around since then, haven't they? So we've got to find them again. So let's start up in the corner again. Anything up the tree? No. Nothing here. 
Nothing here. Nothing here. Let's just see if anything's got blown inside Kanga's house. Right, rain boots. I'd love to know who those belong to. So let's take those to Wall and see what he has to say about them. I really like the graphics in this. I like the graphics of old Sierra games because they're, they're much lower resolution than... Um, sort of the ST is actually capable of. They're about half the normal resolution of ST graphics. Um, but there's, there's just something delightfully chunky about them. And uh, this game is a, a prime example of them. So they're really nice and colourful and they, they show what they're supposed to, but they're, yeah, they're, they're good memories, I guess. Nostalgic. So, that object you're carrying now is interesting. Since there are only two of them, these must belong to someone with only two feet. I hadn't thought of that. That was probably pretty obvious, wasn't it? Um, so, yes, those also belong to Christopher Robin. Thank you, says Christopher Robin. Now my feet will stay dry the next time it rains. Okay, so uh, I think there's just one more left to go, isn't there? So one more item left to go. Leave the treehouse. Oh, well, let's just check. There's not anything up the tree. There is. There's a popped balloon. So, I'm not sure where that belongs. So, again, let's go see Al. An animal with a broken balloon would be very sad. Of course, it's Eeyore's. Of course, it's Eeyore's. So, I, I think I mentioned earlier that all the positions of the items are randomised each time you play this in the game, but actually the specific items that are in the game are randomised as well. There's a much larger bank of items than you get in a single playthrough. And so each time you play it, it is a little bit different. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily have all those items we had to give to Rue this time around every time you play the game. And it also means that despite the game being quite short, you can replay it lots of times. Which I did when I was a kid, because I loved this game. Oh, it's bloody Tigger bastard. I was just about to finish the game, Tigger. You suck. <sighs> Gotta find the bloody thing again now. Alright, let's just check it's not in Al's house. There it is. That's fortunate. Right. Take. Climb down. Climb down carefully. East. South. South. ER. Drop. Thank you for returning my balloon, says he. Oh, you know, Piglet popped it even before he gave it to me, but then what could one expect? Congratulations, you did it. You returned everything that was lost. Now Christopher Robin invites you to a hero party. The good news is, you are the hero. The bad news is, you have to find the party by yourself. Good luck. I know where the party is. Oops, wrong button. Yep, 
Yay, you found it. This is where the party for the big hero is being held. You are the guest of honour because you are the big hero. Christopher Robin has invited everyone to the party. The animals gather around, thanking you for returning everything. Come back soon, says Christopher Robin. After all, you never can tell when that blustery wind might start blowing again. Join the animals in singing the Winnie the Pooh song. Sing along! I'm not going to sing. the whole thing. You know, I don't even know the words to this. I know, like, the first two lines. We're done? I think we're done. Oh, and again. Yeah, enough. Okay, we're done. That is Winnie the Pooh in the Hundred Acre Wood. Here is my map. And we've done it. This is, I think, the first game we've actually finished on this series. Which is very exciting. I hope you enjoyed that. This is well worth playing, even if you are an adult like me. I'm nearly 40 years old and I'm playing Winnie the Pooh on the Atari ST and I don't care I had a great time give it a go you might enjoy it hmm. as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.